So when you're running and analyzing malware, you have to remember that malware normally connects to command and control systems. Command and control systems are the systems on the internet that hackers use to control the victims. Now, a lot of malware is detectable by your ISP or network administrator. So even if you're running this as test, you're like, hey, I know this is test malware. It's all malware. And you start running a lot of malware. Your ISP is going to call you. They're like, hey, what's up? We see a lot of malicious traffic coming from your network. You're like, oh, yeah, I know it's old. It's not going to do anything. I know it's probably being blocked by you guys. They're like, yeah, it's still concerning us that you're running a lot of malware on your systems. So uh, you have to be careful. Uh, some ISPs may just block you. They'll be like, hey, you're doing something bad or you're like a threat actor or you're like trying to do something malicious. So we don't want to actually see this traffic coming from your network. If we are, we're going to block you. You're violating our policies. So you have to be careful about testing malware, especially malware that connects to the Internet. So how do people get around that? Well, there's a couple of ways. As a security researcher, as a cybersecurity analyst, you have a couple of different options. One of the most common options is that uh, you're going to use a VPN service, a VPN service or some sort of cloud provider where you're going to run your system off of. So you're not going to run malware directly, but you're going to use some VPN services. There are a lot of VPN services that are no logging VPN services that are, a lot of people use for security and uh, anonymity as well, especially for researchers. Uh, so uh, you may be able to use that. Of course, VPN services and cloud providers may have their own rules. They'll be like, hey, you know what? You're not allowed to run malware. Yeah, just same thing with your ISP. If you're running malware, even if it's for testing purposes, uh, we're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna be happy for that. Um, so, uh, and also uh, when you do run malware, it could invite other attackers. It could uh, basically get you unwanted attention that you don't want from other threat actors. And it could invite attacks, denial service attacks, as well as other, other attacks on your network or your VPN service. Another way, kind of a way around that is to use a Tor, the Tor network. There are Tor gateways that are available. Uh, you can use a Tor network. Uh, Tor network is more anonymous. It's a little slower, a little more pain to set up, a little more complicated, but it's usually the best way to test malware if you're running remote malware uh, and you need a live connection. So a lot of times you don't need a live internet connection. You can simulate an internet connection. Uh, internet Services Simulation Suite or INET SIM actually simulates internet connectivity. It doesn't actually go out to the real world. It doesn't go out to the internet. And this is where I start off with it. I actually recommend this as the best option. If you have to have live internet, I use uh, Tor and I use VPN together. Uh, I, uh, at the same time, I run a VPN and then I run Tor on top of that VPN. But, uh, but if I don't have that option or uh, if I, uh, I mean, actually, even if I do have that option, my best and my first choice is to use simulation services. Multiple tools. I like iNetSim. It's a very popular tool for malware researchers because it actually does let you do a lot of other types of uh, research as well. But it simulates an internet connection. It simulates DNS. It simulates uh, downloads. So if your malware is making requests, it actually lets you look at that. It actually lets you examine that as well. It does a little better job of examining things as well. So uh, it lets you look at the actual connections, the actual commands going through so it has like some built-in proxy it's not a proxy server by any means but it does have some built-in proxy like capabilities at least from a research perspective so you can see commands going through files being requested it will provide whatever the malware needs you know so if it does need to connect to um, a, a certain server or it needs to download a certain uh, you know a certain file it will kind of let you know what that is and provide that for you now of course it's not connecting it's doing its best in simulation so you can only get to so far in it, but I always uh, recommend this is the place to start off with is simulation. You're not getting your ISP mad, you're not getting your cloud provider or your VPN service mad, mad and you don't have to deal with the complexities of setting up a, uh, a Tor gateway. Another simulation uh, device is called FakeNet. Uh, FakeNet is very similar to INET SIM, but INET SIM is uh, exclusive for uh, uh, Linux-based systems and it works really, really well. There's a lot of videos and a lot of uh, documentation on it. Um, FakeNet is a similar uh, tool. It's a little dated. It may have some uh, issues with newer operating systems and patches. Um, that's why it's not as used as much, 
but it does work very easily. It is made by a company called FireEye, which is an excellent company, really, really well known and respected uh, for uh, any, you know, researching a lot of different types of malware, a lot of different types of attacks, attack groups. Uh, they're considered one of the leaders in the field. Um, definitely check them out if you have not heard of them. I'm sure most of you have heard of them, but if you haven't, check them out. They also make a lot of good products as well uh, and provide great services. Um, but uh, instead of uh, let, let me stop talking about them, let me talk about the program they provide. They have a number of tools that they do provide to the community. FakeNet is one of them. Uh, it's not as maintained as lately, but just because iNet Sim is just just more popular, there's more videos. It just seems like a little more flexible. But if you're starting off and you're not that familiar with Windows, you may want to take a look at FakeNet. Sometimes I do want things on Windows, and I have things I have to do specifically on Windows. I can't really move things around on Linux just as easily in some rare cases. So I will usually have FakeNet running to some extent. All right, I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I will see you next time.